okay guys like I said in the previous tutorial in this tutorial I'll show you how to write a simple table model that is gonna extend our Zynix table model here and uh, that class I would like us to write that class in the com.zynix.cells package this very package over here so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna right click on this package and we're gonna select new Java class and then we're gonna give the class a name so I'm gonna call it cells record table model and I'm gonna click on finish so here we have a, a class cells record table model public class cells record table model and like I said this class is going to save as the uh, class or object that is going to represent the data that will be stored here okay so this class has to be written in a structure that will conform to the kind of columns and rows that we're gonna expect and the kind of data types that we're gonna expect in uh, this this uh, table that this J table that we're gonna have in our mainframe so I hope you understand where we're going from here so the, the, the first thing that we're going to do in the cells record table model is to extend the Zanix table model like I told you about. Also notice that the Zanix table model is a generic class. Uh, uh, when I mean by generic class, it has these uh, angle brackets here. Um, the angle brackets specifies the data type that will be specified to represent each row. So whatever data type that you're going to specify here, is going to be the data type that each row is going to have so when we are extending it we will also have to ex uh, uh, you know identify the data type that uh, we're going to expect in uh, each row in the table in the j table so here we go so i'm extending xanix table model and uh, i'll have to import xanix table model from com.zynix.cells.util.zynix uh, table model and here is the import statement for Zynix table model now uh, like I said um, okay Zynix table model was abstract if you can recall it's abstract so there are some abstract data that we have to overwrite in cells record table model because if you are a subclass and you are extending an abstract class then you must override all the abstract methods that was found in the abstract class and you know you, if you really want to know the abstract methods that was found in the abstract class then you can check them out here from the navigator and then you can see uh, some of the the methods that are here uh, you can also check it from the code base you see those abstract methods but you don't have to do all that you uh, I, I, I'm gonna show you an easier way to write all the abstract methods uh, without you know checking in this class because like I said you you don't really have to you know bother much about the details of this class just uh, copy it and paste it in the package I told you to do in the previous tutorial and then you should be good to go well, however, before I uh, start overriding all those abstract methods, I would like to identify the data type for each row in this table model. Like I told you before, a uh, Xenix table model is generic, so, so we have to specify the data type here of each row that we're going to expect. And the data type I'm going to choose for this tutorial is an array of object, an array of java.lang.object okay which is the you know root class for all the java class hierarchy all right so down that i have uh, you know specified the data type for each row in the generic type i have to now implement all abstract methods by clicking on this you know red uh, uh, yellow bulb here and uh, if i click on it it brings this auto suggestion which I will select the first one which says implement all abstract methods so if I click on that then it's going to implement all abstract methods actually there's only one abstract method that I I had to implement 
override and this uh, the ID has done that already for me so I'm gonna remove this generated code that the NetBeans ID automatically generates for me all right so now the next thing that we're gonna do okay don't worry about this error we will uh, come back to that the next thing that we're gonna do is that uh, we need to uh, write a constructor a suitable constructor for this uh, this class but uh, because that's that's what the, the error is uh, the error we're having says no suitable constructor I hope you can see that but uh, before we write a constructor I would like to define the fields that we're gonna expect so that you when I'm writing the constructor you can understand um, why I'm using that type of constructor so um, the first field that we're gonna expect is uh, the child column names so I'm gonna declare an array that is gonna store the column names because we need to specify column names for the J table so the column names is uh, the names of the columns that we're gonna have like s slash n is a column name invoice number is a column name description is a column name price so that customer name are all column names so we need to specify that in our code in here and I, I'm using an array of string to specify all those column names so I've declared a field that will hold all those column names and the name of the field is uh, child column names okay so the next field that we're gonna have to specify is the 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 field that will store the data itself yeah okay the rows of data and recall we were expecting array of objects um, for the rows of the data so we're gonna create an array list of uh, arrays of objects okay I hope you can recall that an array list is a collection and a collection can store uh, a, a, certain, a, a, a number of objects or any number of objects that you have on like an array that you have to specify um, a size but this one the array list can you can be adding uh, you know objects into it and the objects that we're gonna be adding is arrays of java the language object i hope i'm not confusing you on that one so we're gonna call this field data so like i said data is gonna be an array list of arrays of objects okay so please really understand that one very well because each row is gonna be an array of object and then we are gonna have multiple rows so that's why we need to have an array list of arrays of object okay so I'm not gonna say that one again so let's move on so I have to import uh, java.util.array list because it's necessary to do that and uh, the next field that we're gonna declare is an array of class which is going to store the data types that the columns are gonna hold recall that we're gonna have columns in this table so we need to specify what kind of data types each column is gonna hold like for example serial number is gonna hold integers Invoice number is gonna hold strings. Description is gonna hold strings. Price is gonna hold doubles, and customer name is gonna hold strings. So we need to uh, specify those data types in an array of classes. Okay. Hope you know that there is a class called class in the Java API documentation. Uh, okay, I'm sure I've mentioned that in this uh, tutorial series. All right. So the next uh, field that we're gonna uh, identify. Is gonna be an array of boolean and this one is gonna specify what columns that will be editable so I will simply call this can edit okay so we will use this array of boolean to specify columns that we can be able to edit alright so um, those are the fields that we're gonna have for this class now um, I also like to define some uh, other fields that will serve as constants so I can simply be picking them up to use as a child column names so I uh, have to declare some constants let's see how many constants that we're gonna expect one two three four five columns so we should have five 
constants for each column. All right. So the first constant is going to be a protected static final string. And I'm going to call this uh, serial number. So I'm going to store the value of that to be what we have here, s slash n. So that when we run it, it's going to appear that way. Just, I just want to get what we already have here in the main frame. Uh, I hope you recall that this one was dragged and dropped. So we can't really customize this one the way we're going to do in the source code here. All right. So that's it. And uh, the next uh, constant that we're going to have, I'm kind of getting lazy. lazy so I'm going to copy. Uh, permit me to copy and paste like five times so that uh, I can easily modify because all these constants are going to be protected static final strings. So the next one is going to be invoice number. And uh, what I'm going to store inside the string is going to be what I expect to see in um, over here in the column. So, so I'm going to call that invoice and O the dot because that's what I saw. Okay, so um, the next uh, constant is going to be the description. check that's what we had the next constant is gonna be price sold and the last but not the least is the customer name one feature that I'm using capital letters to represent constant and that's the Java naming, naming convention so I advise you guys to stick to that all right so um, I like this tutorial to be a little bit shorter so I would like to stop here instead of continuing so I hope you guys understand that um, the essence of this constant is so that I can easily identify the column names in, uh, using variable constants uh, instead of uh, you know identifying them with you know what we have here because uh, according to design patterns is uh, good to uh, uh, reference this inf kind of information using uh, constants okay instead of uh, you know referencing them using the string literals so I hope you found this informative and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel don't forget to check our website and i'll see you on the next video tutorial